you were done painting, you discover paint bleed under your tape. Not with frog tape. Frog tape is the only painter's tape treated with paint block technology. Paint block reacts with the water in latex paint to form a micro barrier against paint bleed, giving you the sharpest lines possible. Get professional results with frog tape. No messy lines, no paint bleed. For sharp lines, every time, frog it. Monday, our backstage exclusive at the BET Awards. That is going to be a lot of fun. Yep. It's culture's big night. Plus, we're talking to Christian Bale about his Thor villain transformation. Yep, yep, and Selena Gomez shares happening now. In light of the SCOTUS final opinion, all Texas clinics of Planned Parenthood have put a halt on all abortions. Until when and what does this mean for those being turned away? We hear directly from Planned Parenthood coming up. There's a new memorial honoring the victims of Uvalde. They're plaques designed to stand the test of time. We'll show you who did them and why. Next. If you're sick of the 100 degree heat, a little bit of patience will pay off. We just have to make it through the weekend. I'm going to tell you how much temperatures will drop and when, and also talk about the increasing rain chances. The News at 5 starts right now. Now, first at five, Roe versus Wade officially overturned, and the United States Supreme Court ruling is already impacting Texas clinics. Planned Parenthood announcing it is suspending all abortions at its clinics. 80 miles north in Austin, Whole Women's Health also pausing abortion services. As Alicia Barrera explains, the clinics say that they're committed to educating the public and also providing safe services, but they're not turning their backs on abortion rights. In this moment, there are real people that are impacted uh, and they continue to be impacted. Abortion care at clinics, including Planned Parenthood's, hit an indefinite pause in the Lone Star State. We must pause abortion services at our separate organizations. And while the exact number of abortions canceled Friday isn't clear, Dr. Bhavik Kumar, medical director of Planned Parenthood Gulf Coast, says the change is immediate. This morning, we had to turn away several folks that were trying to get their abortion completed today, but unfortunately, we're not able to because of this decision. Currently, all other services at their clinics remain in place. Today's pause on abortion procedures, a move in anticipation of Texas's trigger law that would outlaw all abortions in the state in 30 days. Our legal teams continue to review today's devastating ruling and how it impacts and triggers existing Texas laws, including two total abortion bans. In a virtual press conference today, the legal advocacy organization Center for Reproductive Rights says the SCOTUS final opinion could lead to chaos and confusion. People in some parts of the country will now have to travel hundreds, if not thousands of miles to access basic care that they need. And the reality is that many people just won't be able to do that. The focus now is on litigation. I think you're going to see an incredible outpouring across the nation. We work with over 750 lawyers a year around the world, many of them in the United States. Planned Parenthood has five locations in San Antonio, but only two of those actually offered abortion services prior to the pause. And now there's no exact timeline on when these Texas clinics would resume abortion services. Reporting Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. The decision to overturn Roe v. Wade will have implications for women across America. Here in Bear County, District Attorney Joe Gonzalez is sharing a message with the public today. Our Camelia Juarez was at the DA's news conference this morning and also caught up with his opponent, Mark LaHood. Camelia. Steve, Stephania, this morning the DA stood alongside pro-choice activists and his message was that there is no justice prosecuting abortion laws against women and medical care workers. He says he will comply with the law and he will review and decide cases on a case-by-case -case basis. Now, we reached out to the San Antonio Police Department and the Bear County Sheriff's Office about whether they will investigate abortions. SAPD says they do not have an answer at this time, but are trying to understand the new law. The Sheriff's Office has not responded to our request. The DA says he will prosecute cases that are, quote, extreme circumstances. Let's say uh, hypothetically, a 17-year-old uh, young lady who is forced by her parents to do this under duress, uh, that, that certainly in my mind is an extreme circumstance. But short of that, 
if someone is, is voluntarily seeking out this treatment, uh, they ought not to be worried about being prosecuted. As the elected DA, I will enforce every law that's on the books. Now coming up at 6, we'll hear more from Gonzalez and LaHood coming up at 6. Live from the courthouse, Camelia Juarez, KSAT 12 News. Familia, thank you. We know that at least one company says it's going to pay for travel if employees have to go out of state for an abortion. J.P. Morgan Chase is calling it an expansion of employee benefits, and that's going to take effect July 1st. Chase says that abortion has been a long-covered service, but now it's going to be considered a health care travel benefit. The overturning of Roe v. Wade brings up a lot of questions on whether other precedents are also in danger, including things like same-sex marriage and contraception. Justice Samuel Alito saying those precedents are not at risk, but at the same time, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas says the court has a duty to, quote, correct the error, end quote, established precedents that strike down state restrictions on contraceptives, state sodomy bans, and state prohibitions on same-sex marriage. Exactly one month ago, 19 students and two teachers were killed inside Robb Elementary in Uvalde. Today, the fight for change continues. In the days and weeks after the shooting, the victims' families, friends, and people they never had a chance to meet have turned this tragedy into an opportunity for activism, a chance to promote change. Their goal is to make sure no family endures this type of loss ever again. On the one-month mark, our hearts are with the victims and the families in Uvalde. Remember their names. Following the May 24 shooting, the memorial outside Robb Elementary has been a place for people to seek closure and try to find a little bit of healing. Yeah, visitors from all over the country have been paying their respects to the victims, leaving flowers, crosses, stuffed animals, really anything to honor each life that was taken. Our John Paul Barajas in Uvalde again today. He joined us live from outside of Robb Elementary. John Paul, there's something new heading to that memorial site that we're going to talk about, though. That's right, and that addition is already here. But before we get to, to that uh, new addition, I want to take you around the memorial site. A month ago, this campus was swarmed by law enforcement and surrounded by parents trying to get in to get to their kids. Today, this campus is surrounded by flowers that over time have started to turn brown and wilt, along with photos and mementos that have taken a beating from the weather. And if you follow me this way, for that very reason is why the nonprofit Social Donations made plaques that are a little bit sturdier. They have the victims' names on them, they have pictures, as well as words from their obituaries to try and give them a more permanent and weather-resistant addition. And the reason that there's only five plaques out right now is because the rest of them are in boxes like this one, waiting for the families to come place them themselves. Keep their memories alive, keep their stories alive. We don't want them to be forgotten. We're gonna keep continuing to share their memories in honor of their families. We wanted to create not just the face, but a name. We wanna remember their names as well. So I looked up every single one of their obituaries. And today also doesn't just mark one month since that tragic shooting. It's also high school seniors graduation day coming up at six. We'll be there to see what the turnout looks like at that optional ceremony, as well as to try to speak with families. And Uvalde, John Paul Barajas, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, John Paul. Turning it out to the topic of gun reform, Congress passing the most sweeping gun bill in 30 years. And while some are criticizing what that bill doesn't accomplish, others say it should be respected for what it does. ABC News' Alexis Christophorus has more. The motion is adopted. But Lawmakers in the House have passed the most significant gun legislation in decades. The motion is adopted. The House vote coming a day after 15 Senate Republicans joined Democrats to provide new tools to deter mass shootings following deadly attacks around the nation. This legislation will protect our schools, protect our communities, and safeguard the Second Amendment rights 
of law-abiding citizens. The $13 billion package will enhance background checks for buyers under 21, prevent partners convicted of domestic violence from purchasing a gun, and provide funding for gun violence prevention programs, school security, and mental health. But the package falls short of President Biden's proposals, including reinstituting a ban on assault-style weapons and universal background checks. It isn't everything we would have liked to see in legislation. It takes us down the road, the path to more safety, saving lives. Let us not judge the legislation for what it does not do, but respect it for what it does. The Senate vote came the same day the Supreme Court ruled that New York State's limits on carrying concealed handguns in public is unconstitutional. We cannot allow New York to become the wild, wild west. That is unacceptable. The high court ruling impacts at least six other states with similar carry and conceal laws, including California and Massachusetts. That landmark congressional gun legislation now heads to President Biden's desk where he is expected to sign it into law. Alexis Christophorus, ABC News, New York. Now here at home, we're still working to learn the name of a man who was shot and killed on the west side. According to SAPD, he was shot several times while riding his bike on South San Dario Street. This was around 3.30 this morning. Officers found the man's bike and shell casings in the street, but no suspect. The two people arrested this morning after SAPD says they fired at officers who were checking on a stolen vehicle. It happened in the 1000 block of San Fernando Street. The officers saw the two people running from the area where those shots were fired from. No one hit three vehicles in the area that were damaged by bullets, including a San Antonio police vehicle. And checking traffic out on this Friday, I 10 and Callahan. And as you might expect, it is very slow going. I think we're looking uh, westbound here. It's the eastbound lanes of I 10 where it splits into 410 or keeps going towards downtown where you can see there's a big backup in those two lanes as well as the access lane. Again, this is I-10 and Callahan. We're looking west, so it's the eastbound lanes that are very slow going at this hour. And of course, we're feeling the heat again today. 100 degrees, the high temperature so far for the day. I always say that because this time of year between now and about 630, we sometimes see a little temperature jump. But 100 so far, that's shy of the record by 2 degrees, and it's 7 degrees above average. For the most part, just above 100. 103 in shirts. Leon Springs an exception at 97, but Warren's backyard in Del Rio, check that out, 106 degrees right now. That's what he reported in. Even Lavernia, about 104. Temperatures gradually falling this evening. We're going to talk about the big changes that happened starting Monday in just a bit. Thank you, Adam. You know, there's a glimmer of hope for a little rain next week, as Adam said, and it's much needed for everyone, including some hill country wineries. RJ Marquez checks in with two vineyards in Fredericksburg to see how they've been holding up during the drought and their fears about the future when we come back. I'm Myra Arthur here in the KSAT newsroom. Tonight on the news at 6, we're continuing the conversation on the Supreme Court's ruling to overturn Roe v. Wade. We're hearing from those who were in favor of this decision. One woman we talked to says that outlawing abortion is a matter of offering alternatives. Hear her perspective and the message that her group wants to share with the San Antonio community. That's coming up at 6. Plus, in light of today's ruling, you have likely heard about trigger laws. Several states have them ready to outlaw abortion at the state level with the overturning of Roe versus Wade, Texas included there. We explain these trigger laws and how they work. That's coming up on the news at 6. We'll see you then. Thank you, Myra. Winemaking a big business in the Texas Hill Country, but like us, these wineries are dealing with extreme heat and drought conditions. The Hill Country actually produces the second largest amount of wine grapes in the state of Texas. The thing is, Gillespie County is under the most intense level of drought. RJ Marquez visited two Fredericksburg wineries that are feeling the heat to keep up production. It's no secret that Texas is hot. It's another hot day in the Hill Country, and these wineries are adapting to this early summer heat wave. So you can trellis them over. Brian McConey, general manager at Augusta Vin, says they are countering the heat by leaving more leaves and stem on the vines. We're making sure that our grape clusters are shaded, that they're that none are 
really uh, directly exposed to sunlight. We're relying a little bit more on reflective lights. But another issue is the drought and getting these vines enough water. When you restrict that water early on, you naturally end up with more concentrated wine because the berries end up being smaller. There are 60 acres planted here at Augusta Vineyards and for the most part, these leaves right here are doing a good job of protecting grapes on the vines, but the vines are pulling water from the ground, which means that if we were to hit any sort of water restrictions, that would absolutely change this vineyard situation. We would have to pull back significantly from the growth that you're seeing out here. Slate Theory opened months ago. Coner Chase Jones said his younger vines are most vulnerable during extreme weather and severe drought. They're my babies, man. Yeah. 180,000 babies. I'm having to try to push a bunch of water, push some nitrogen out to try to get the growth. In an effort to beat the heat, Slate Theory built a 10,000 square foot underground wine cellar, the first in Texas. Keep it 61 degrees or so to keep it nice and neutral down there for the for the wine. Jones and Manconi say time will tell how this will affect overall taste and prices. Might see an increase in price because of what we've had to put out and all the energy we've had to put into this vineyard. Just because of the drought. Look for more concentration in 2022 for those that are able to keep that water on. In Fredericksburg, RJ Marquez, KSAT 12 News. You know, while we're talking about the drought, here's one place that's really seeing it, and that is Medina Lake. Right now you're seeing, I mean, even though the water does look beautiful, 101 degrees out there right now. I'm jealous of those people who are out in the water. Yeah, it, but, but I mean, they've been suffering through the drought too, yep. so I'm glad they could actually find some water to to sail on out there, Adam. Yeah, and coming up at six o'clock, we'll actually look at the current lake levels out there. But of course, Medina Lake, very low. And it is one, it's a reservoir that's very prone to massive fluctuations. And when you get a drought like this, you know it's going to drop significantly. So here are headlines, 100 degrees through the weekend. Not as hot, though, as we get into next week. And actually a few opportunities for a few showers as well as those temperatures drop. So. Taking a look at our temperature trend tomorrow, about 101 Sunday, 100 and then look at that down into the 90s on Monday and I think a pretty good chance of 80s by Tuesday of next week. But let's take a look at the month of June so far. Of course, it's been hot. We all know that it's been well above average. Actually, right now we're nearly six degrees above average. The hottest temperature we had was 105 and that happened on the 12th of the month. And you can see all those records that we broke as well. By the way, those are record high temperatures that were broken. And we do anticipate temperatures to drop a little below average as we get into next week. You look across the state, we're all feeling the heat. 98 Amarillo, get into Guymon, Oklahoma, 103. 102 Del Rio and Junction, Laredo, and even 104. Meanwhile, here in San Antonio, right at 100. Look at Catula, 105, but even warmer than that, Eagle Pass at 106 at this hour. More triple digits on the map than 90s on the map right now. Even Rio Medina, 101 in New Braunfels at 100. So tomorrow morning, we start the day for the most part, mid 70s locally, some lower 70s though, in some outlying areas by the afternoon. We do this all over again, back up to 100 degrees, and I think even just a hair above 100 for most of us. I mean, south side of San Antonio, about 102. You get to Helotus, about 98, into the hill country, upper 90s, right near 100. Really, you're not going to feel that much of a change, but it's just that psychological factor of triple digits or not. Kerrville 98, Bandera, about 101 tomorrow afternoon. By Sunday, it's more of the same. Sunny and hot, try to find a pool or some kind of waterway to uh, cool off in and maybe uh, keep your uh, be a little more refreshing for you. But next week we see the changes. So here's the big picture. Big blue H, upper level high. It's basically over Texarkana right now. Of course, still really influencing our weather. The active weather is deflected up and around it. That's why we have the severe weather all the way up north into the Dakotas and northern Minnesota this afternoon and evening. That upper high, it's going to break down as we get into the early next week, and that's going to open the door for a weak cool front and, of course, an entire weather pattern shift. So here's what we're expecting in terms of our future cast. Don't pay very close attention to the exact placement of these showers on Monday. Just the mere fact that it's showing the potential for some rain as we get into Monday and then again on into Tuesday. There's still some uncertainty as to exactly who's going to get it and when, but at least we see some better rain chances in the forecast. I mean, we go from 0% this weekend to 30% on Monday, up to 40% on Tuesday, 
then those rain chances fall off again toward the end of next week. So 76 in the morning tomorrow, uh, sunshine all day long by noon already 91 and then a high temperature right near 100 next week. Cross your fingers for your neighborhood. Not everybody's going to get it, but at least we should see some pockets of rain. Man, four days of chances. That's better than what we've yeah, had for a while. That's all we can ask. Hopefully for. we get something. All right. Thank you. All right, so we went one on one with the Spurs number two pick. Yeah, and this is a guy they're calling the steal of the draft, Malachi Branham. When we come back, we will introduce you, in fact, to all three of the newest members of the Spurs out of the NBA draft last night. And our Larry Ramirez is right there to go one on one with Malachi coming up. Meet the three newest members of the San Antonio Spurs following a historic draft night for the silver and black. For the first time in franchise history, three picks in the first round. The Spurs' first pick overall, number nine, was Baylor freshman Jeremy Sohan, who you met here on Wednesday in our draft preview. Six foot nine defensive forward out of Baylor, where he has a seven foot wingspan, makes him a very good defensive player. The Spurs' second pick, number 20 overall, they went with Malachi Branham, a guard out of the Ohio State University, where he is a shooter, almost 43% from three point range, 50% from the field. And finally, with their 25th pick, the Spurs select. Blake Wesley, a guard out of Notre Dame, 6'4", project player, who's also the third 19-year-old the Spurs drafted last night. We had all three guys with uh, draft grades inside of, inside of 20. Um, so to be able to get all three of them uh, with our three picks in the first round, we're really excited about that. All right, our Larry Ramirez was in Brooklyn last night and had a chance to catch up with Malachi. All right, Malachi, uh, you are now a member of the San Antonio Spurs, selected 20th overall in the NBA draft. What are you feeling, man? It's kind of it's kind of hard to explain. Um, I'm just trying to live in the moment. I'm super excited though. You know, this is this is a dream come true. Walk me through that moment out there on yeah. the stage with the commissioner, mm -hmm. shaking his hand, smiling. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's what I that's what I wanted. You know, I'm, I'm just blessed to be at the green room, blessed to be able to walk across the stage and shake the commissioner's hand. Um, so I'm just I'm just happy. I'm just living in a moment. <laughs> what can Spurs fans expect to see out of you on the court? Yeah, really. Um, you know, I'm going to be a hard worker. You know, I'm going to I'm going to work on on both ends of on both ends of the court, um, and I'm going to be a great teammate. I'm going to be a great teammate. Who are you looking forward to uh, getting to know on the Spurs? I mean, because they have a lot of great guards. Yeah. You know, starting with Dejounte. Yeah, that's what I say. Dejounte. Um, um, Dejounte. I feel like he's um, you know he's a veteran guy, so I feel like I'm going to you know definitely take some stuff uh, from him, and it's going to be good. How about getting to uh, learn under uh, Greg Popovich? That's, that's going to be crazy. One of the best coaches, you know, in the NBA. So that's, I'm excited. I'm super excited. Who did you have out there with you family-wise today? Uh, my, my mom, my uncle, my grandma, my agent, and then uh, my trainer. We became family, so. Okay. Yeah. And you've already got silver and black on, man. Uh, yeah, you know, it's a lot of people who are saying that. I just really like the, I just really like the suit, man. You know, I'm, you know, silver and black, you know. I guess it was guess it was set in stone. So I'm, I'm super excited. You what the color looks good on, good on you. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Uh -huh. All right, man. Back to you. All right, meant to be. There you go. And there, that's yeah. the guy they're calling the steal of the draft because even the Spurs say they had him in the teens on their draft board. All right, I've got some breaking sports news here. Go for it. SAISD announced their latest inductees into their athletic hall of fame. Six honorees. One of them. Our own Greg Simmons, a graduate with Thomas Jefferson. Um, no, I'm sorry, a graduate oh. at Thomas Jefferson <laughs> High School oh, back no. in 1974. This is all true. Yeah. This is all true. Well but, uh, deserved, my Well, it's very gracious of them all for that, yes. Very nice of them. The Athletic Hall of Fame. Yes. Greg Obviously, Simmons. they never say me play anything. <laughs> well, no, but I mean, you have definitely left your mark on this city. Immediately. Yes, thank you. Appreciate Congratulations. that. Congratulations. Thank you. We'll, we'll be, be right, right back. back.